Well, good evening. Thank you again for joining us. My name is Missy. I work at Awana headquarters with the Awana Club ministry staff. Thank you so much for joining us. Right now, um, we are prepping to have our director of children's ministry walk us through the features of the new small group guides. And he will also be providing some context, too, for what it means to actually run a small group in TNT Club Night. Uh, if there's anybody new amongst us in our audience tonight, I want to remind you, if you haven't had the chance to download the new sample, you can do so by logging on to awana.org forward slash TT update and get a sample of the brand new curriculum. The webinar should last about an hour, and I want to invite you to ask your questions as soon as they occur to you so that we have time to respond to everyone if possible. In the end, if you have additional questions that didn't get answered, please email us at ttupdate at awana.org. In a minute, I will hand the presentation over to our Director of Children's Ministry. But before I do, um, I just want to go over again a few of the mechanics for those of you who are new. Um, if you simply move your cursor across your, your computer, you should notice a Q&A bubble or icon pop up on your screen on the toolbar within Google Hangouts. If you simply click that, you should be able to type in your question on that right hand bar um, and we would we would love to hear from you so please ask your question as soon as it occurs I also wanted to mention that if you would rather tweet us your question go ahead and tweet at us at Awana and hashtag it Awana TT update we will be monitoring Twitter as well so feel free to ask your questions there alright again thank you so much for coming without any further delay here's Chris Marchand hey everybody um... Glad that you're here and able to join us tonight as we spend some time walking through the small group leader guide for the new TNT update, as well as uh, just talk through some just sort of basic, uh, you know, even best practices in small group to help um, fill out and flesh out a little bit more of what we mean when we uh, when we talk about small group. Um, just again, welcome everybody here tonight. Happy spring uh, for those of you who. You know, you, you're connected with Awana. You've used our products and programs uh, before. Uh, welcome back. For those of you who are new, uh, you may not know anything about uh, TNT, but you're looking for a small group curriculum to use in your church. Uh, hope that the next couple of minutes that we're together can be uh, very helpful for you uh, as you make that decision. Um, just wanted to start out again talking through again those best practices and just some of those dynamics of small group because one of the major changes probably the most significant and, and, and substantive change um, with the TNT program has been um, it has been in the way that we've introduced small group uh, to the program format um, before those of you who are familiar with Awana you'll notice that in the past we've had something called handbook time and handbook time was ex exactly that. It was a bunch of uh, usually it's a it's a bunch of kids and uh, with some leaders uh, around the table. Uh, and the point is uh, either uh, the kids spend time memorizing their verses, or uh, for some for some of the kids they spend time working through their handbooks. Uh, but it's just dedicated time in the night for them to do those two particular things. And with this new TNT update, um, there's a bit of a change uh, that that we that we really wanted to see. Um, with with the update in that we we really want to leverage more of what I would call a, a small group environment. Um, so, but what is a small group environment? Um, no matter where you are on the local church spectrum, even the word small group can mean a, a lot of things to a lot of different uh, church church ministry contexts. So, I just want to frame in here and kind of give some some I, I think some good uh, context and. Uh, some boundary lines of necessarily what we're talking about uh, when we meet when we mean in terms of small group and, and really to kick this off um, I don't know if any of you have read um, any of the books uh, written and authored by Dietrich Bonhoeffer I think he's he just an incredible mind uh, was an incredible mind um, but he has a and I'm gonna paraphrase something that he says that comes out of the book um, that, he, that he wrote life together uh, which is a great book about uh, living and working out your faith and community um, but uh, just a paraphrase there which he offers kind of as a, as a warning in his book um, and my paraphrase is that we need to be alone you and I need to be alone so we can be together and we need to be together so that I can be alone uh, and that you can be alone as well so part of it is just this dynamic of a trade-off necessarily that the, the reason why um, we come together as a, as a community is, is because we need to have opportunity to 
rub shoulders with one another. Again, that iron sharpening iron. Um, and, and work out these things that we're we're either wrestling with on our own, and bring those into a community, and and have and, and really do just do the work of spending time together, having dialogue, good discussion, good conversation, um, and then also just to be able to do life together. And the reason why we need to do that together is because at some point, I'm not going to have the benefit of the the group and the community around me. At some point, um, for some of our kids, they're going to be either at school. Um, where they may not be surrounded with peers who 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 come um, from a just a, a believing background, and even for you yourself, you may you may find that um, you know you you see a very uh, you see value added and benefit from being part of a, a community of believers. Uh, you know whether you attend a small group or you even a, a attend a adult Bible fellowship or just even some other type of group on uh, on Sundays, you get a benefit from that because you 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 do life together, and as a result when you're either at work or even just away from the group the the you you carry those experiences and those conversations with you over time and I think that that's a great benefit for our students um, so that just that gives a little bit of a framework and a jumping off point because that whole alone to be together and to be together so that we can be alone um, is a is a big dynamic um, worked into the the TNT update um, in the sense that we have a handbook which though the the section so even section 1.1 in the kids handbook if you've downloaded our sample um, all, all that's included in that lesson is really the work that's to be done alone I, I need to do that as a kid prior to coming to group well, what happens when I come to group because that's not the alone anymore now we're together as a group now my peers are here my leader is here and what's gonna happen as a result of that I just want to walk through just really just I think some three key things because uh, just, just to give you a, a grounding and idea of you know what we mean about when we talk about small group. If, if anything, these would be three three things that I would want you to know um, tonight in terms of small group. First is that really small group is a time to know to to really for you and for your kids to get to know each other and connect with your kids and in a sense build a relationship. Now that's a bit of a buzzword that we've used in children's ministry here lately of church, you know, you gotta have a relationship with your kids. Uh, but what does that mean? I mean, to build a relate, you know, how do, how do I get to know my kids? How do I build a relationship with them? Um, I, I kind of want to break this down into an acronym that I that I used back when I was children's and, and, uh, and, and youth pastor, and I think it served me well. I think it's going to serve you well as to, uh, too, because um, I'm sure that for some of you and even for some of your leaders, like you have a roster and you have names on that roster, but do you know the names of the kids on your roster? Do, do you actually know them on a on a level deeper than just knowing their name? Because one of the beautiful things about, uh, in terms of discipleship that we that we read and we see in the scriptures is that Jesus just didn't know the names of his disciples, but I believe that he knew them on an extremely deep and personal level, and and part of that just comes in in the form of really I think understanding their shape, um, and so just the acronym for shape, um, just want to walk through that just word by word just to help give you a context of what do we mean to get to know your kids. What, 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 what am I landing on there? Um, but first is, uh, you know, if, in terms of if they're believers, it's an understanding of the S for shape being their spiritual gifts. Um, I think your kids, uh, you know, they are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of right now. And a lot of uh, the kids in our children's and youth ministries are starting through, as, as they grow and as they mature and, and as they progress in their discipleship, they're starting to show indicators of, of some 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 divine gifting. Um, some, the reason why you have a, a, a kid in your ministry who, who either just can't be quiet to save his life or is constantly bouncing around the room and having energy, you know, a lot of times we see those as negative things. I, I would rather challenge you to see those as positive things. That the, that the reason why they're, 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 in a sense, what we would call acting out or, or, or showing um, uh, who they are is because they're giving us insight into what's happening inside of them. They're giving us some insight into some, some necessarily some, some particular gifting that's happening going on in their lives. I mean, the kid that constantly has to talk may just need that. He may need or she may need a place to talk. Uh, so you're seeing some, some of the first fruits of kids who are having a, a natural gravitation to be proclaimers of the word, to, to have kids who want to share stories, to kids who want to share the truth. Why not leverage that? But I think if we want to know our kids, we have to pay attention to, to, the, to the, the, the spiritual gifting that's growing and happening in their lives. So that would be the first thing. So S, spiritual gifts. H, um, talking about their heart. 
So if I want to get to know my students, part of it is finding out their heart in, term, in terms of what are they passionate about. Um, I, I have kids that all they want to do is talk to me about Minecraft and, Minecraft and Star Wars. That's all that they want to talk about, and I have absolutely no issues talking about those because that's their passions. Um, these are things that are important that resonate with them. Um, I actually think that you and I, we all have things that make us pound the table. Um, in the sense that they just get us fired up for whatever reason. We just have a natural affinity toward them. And part of getting to know your kids is to get to know what makes them pound the table. Um, what's the topic that, for whatever reason, they just won't shut up about? And, a, and that's totally fine. But I think if we want to get to know our kids, we have to give them an opportunity. And, and to develop a relationship with them, we have to give them an opportunity to figure out what they're passionate about. Um, so H, uh, A, attitudes, that's a huge thing um, to, to know about your about the kids in your ministry is that their attitude, some of you are like, yeah, I get their attitude a lot, let me tell you. Well, the thing is, the tr and the truth is, is that their attitude is something for you to pay attention to um, as you have them in your small group environment. Um, I, I remember hearing the story of a, of, of a leader where they had they just had a kid that had just an incredible bad attitude. Like every single week he was getting taken out of uh, handbook time. He was sitting out in the hallway. I mean, they're just, they're, it was just one thing right after another. But the, the truth of the matter was is that nobody was paying attention to that attitude because he, the, you know, this boy was coming to, to, to club. And the reason why he was having such a bad attitude is because he hasn't eaten anything since probably about 1030 that morning. That was probably the last time he actually had something to eat. I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get hangry as well, you know, that, that combination of being hungry and angry. And that can affect my attitude, and it can affect how I interact with other people. So this leader, rather than, you know, hauling this kid out into the hallway, um, actually because she wanted to get to know him, um, started bringing food because the kid needed to eat. And as soon as he started eating, his attitude changed. But you got to pay attention to the attitudes of what's happening in your in, in your small group with your kids. And I think small group, the, just the environment that we're crafting, is a great opportunity for you to get to know your kids by understanding just the the types of attitudes that are coming across. Um, in terms of uh, so uh, in terms of our shape acronym, so we have S H A P, talking about personalities. Um, some of you are like, yeah, we got some personalities in our <laughs> in, in our groups. Let me tell you, but you know, in terms of personality, it's like the you know I want to focus on the character that's being crafted. Um, as a small group leader, I get to know my kids by seeing them in settings where they have to make decisions about their character. And I think that just that that just speaks volumes to where your kids are at. And for you being a for you playing a role as a as as part of a as as part of a discipleship equation in the lives of, of, of these kids, being able to speak in and see what's happening in terms of their character is a huge thing. Uh, it it says a lot about it gives you an opportunity to have some great conversations. Um, uh, you know, with these kids on a weekly basis. And then last, I think, you know, part of, so if, if it's to get to know our kids and to connect with them, then we have to give and make space for the last one, which is E, which is talking through their experiences. Um, giving them opportunity to share from their life, hey, this, this is something that happened. In a sense, what we want them to do is to be able to have space to tell their story. So that's just, you know, that's pretty quick right there. But, um, again, I, I think that we, we need to make space to get to know our kids, to develop a relationship with them. Um, the second thing in terms of a small group, so why do I have a small group? A small group is not only a time to know and connect with your kids, but it's also a time to have conversations with them about what they are learning and experiencing. And I think it's so crucial to have, again, focusing on that word conversations with, your, with our kids. It's not another session where we can talk at them. Uh, small group is not a regurgitation of large group time, uh, but it's an opportunity to, for, for them to give feedback, to listen to them, to have a good, solid conversation. I actually think that that's one of the things that our, our kids struggle with uh, to a large degree, out, even outside of the realm of Juana, is that kids struggle with having a conversation, knowing how to do that back and forth how to bring up a topic and to be able to engage with their peers on a subject that they may agree or not agree um, uh, on. So I, I think there, and, and, and in that regard, as we craft small group time, it's an opportunity for you as the leader, I think, to do more listening than talking. It's an opportunity for you to moderate a discussion and not just um, spend time uh, just uh, talking at your kids.
And then lastly, I think it's an opportunity to create long-lasting memories um, by spending time together as a group wrestling through deep issues and for you as a leader to maximize that time by leveraging your environment and your space. Um, so much uh, of, of some of the feedback and some of the questions that we had is like, okay, you want to do small group? Well, you haven't seen my group of boys. I mean, they are constantly just coming in with high energy. Um, you know, the, how, how am I supposed to get them to sit down and have a conversation? Well, truth be told is you, you may have to change the venue. Um, you may have to get them out of that sterile white room with the round chairs and, you know, sitting looking at each other. That may not work for your ministry context. And I think if you want to create deep, lasting moments, then part of that uh, for, for, us as, you know, for us as small group leaders, we have to do the work of getting creative and, and, and utilizing what's available to us. So that, so that room of boys that's just jumping all over the place, um, you may need to get them outside of that room. Um, I, I, have, I, I know of a leader that, that for, the, for their group of boys, they want to run. They just have energy. They just have energy built up, and, and honestly, game time isn't enough that they do a little bit more, and so he, he has them run wind sprints, and they love it. They love to run um, just so that they can get that energy out so that way when they come and after they do wind sprints or maybe they play a quick pickup game of basketball or horse or just something to do, be active, and then they just crash right there in the gym, and when as the boys are all, uh, all just sitting and seat, seated, then they have a small group discussion. Um, I think part of as we move forward in talking about small group is so much of this is going to need to be um, you as the leader thinking through what's best for your kids and then also to create a, a component of club that, that just isn't about okay did you do all the work did you check everything off did, you, did, did I get everything done on the list but lifelong discipleship lifelong impact happens um, when we spend a, a good amount of time getting to know our kids and connecting with them uh, being able to have good conversations with them where I'm not talking at them, but I'm able to talk with them and to engage in that conversation. And then lastly, it's an opportunity to create really sticky, long-lasting long memories of, of, of just some moments connecting with your kids by leveraging the environment that they're, that, that they're in appropriately. So those are just a, a couple of, 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 of quick tips right there just to kind of help frame in uh, what, we talk, what we mean when we talk about small group. Uh, and, and in that environment. Um, we're anticipating having some training available uh, at, a, at, a, at a later date. I don't have any details for you on that, but I know it's been a big topic out there and a lot, and some of you have been asking uh, for more information on just how do I transition from handbook time to, uh, to, to more of a small group time. I want to shift gears here because now uh, I want to just dive right into uh, sort of our, our walkthrough on the uh, small group uh, leaders and fast track guide because I've um, got some things to show you here. So again, uh, small group leader and fast track guide. Uh, this is a component for small group leaders to use um, in, in, in connection to uh, the TNT program. The beauty about this is that as a leader, you don't have to use multiple, like, I, I, you know, I, I, we got this question a lot of time, like, well, okay, I have, a sm I have a leader's guide, but I also, do, does that mean I need to go out and buy a student handbook, as, or a kid's handbook as well? You don't need to do that. As we walk through, you'll see some similarities, especially if you spend some time with our curriculum sample. But let's go through and talk about this right here. So this is the first spread. So I open up lesson one. This is the lesson one, God is creator. Um, you're going to see some similarities, but just want to walk through this component by component, just give you a, a good overview of what you're looking at and what all the components do. Uh, the first thing that you'll see is a prep list. Um, this is a list of different things that you need to complete in order to be prepared as a small group leader. Um, in this case, the prep list is read the lesson summary and the start here. Complete the start here activity. Um, choose memory activities from part two of this guide. Again, this is a sample. Uh, we did not include part two in the sample, so some of this is going to reference uh, material that you haven't seen yet, but it is included in the final small group leaders guide that you'll be able to purchase. Um, and then it's also to review the explore page, and then it just says, again, we threw in some tips. If you have a small group time before a large group, you may want to share lesson summary in its entirety with your small group to get them thinking about the lesson theme. Um, just, th again, that's that comes back to how you divide up the night, how you uh, place the different components of your club on a particular night. Um, here you'll see underneath of that we have a lesson summary. So what, what is the nugget? I mean, 
that is so valuable for small group leaders to know because if I'm going to carry again, carry on that conversation uh, with my kids, g give it to me in a, in a digestible form. I just need like the nu what is what is the nugget and the lesson summary really gives um, an opportunity to sort of share high level um, in about one or two paragraphs. Hey, this is this is our topic, and give some context uh, to be able to fill that in for you. Um, then, if you look on the uh, right hand side of the screen, you'll see something that's very familiar because it's exactly what is in the kids' handbook. You see the start here at the top. That start here again is the same start here for lesson for section 1.1 God is Creator lesson in the kids handbook. Now why did we do this? Because something that's interesting is you're going to see the same start here and the same explore on the next spread um, in the in, in the small group leader guide. Well one we wanted to do that because we found that our in our test that a lot of leaders were referencing these pages and they were having to flip-flop between a, a resource that helps them lead small group and the kids handbook and so they were just constantly going back and forth between two resources. We took them all, mashed them into one so to make it a lot more easier for you to use. But just want to share just a little story here with this is that a long time ago when I was a children's and youth pastor, um, I was doing a Bible study and in that Bible study came, you know, every single week the kids had to go out, do essentially like homework, bring it back, and we talked about it as a group. And in that we had a, and so some of their questions had an answer key. And so I had the answer key in front of me, and then I have this young man sitting on my right-hand side, and he sees my answer key. And then I notice him just sort of push back away from the table. And I'm like, what, 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 what's this about? And he goes, I'm not doing it anymore. And I said, well, what do, you, what? what do you mean you're not doing it anymore? And he goes, yeah, if you don't do it, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and let me tell you, I never have forgotten that moment. Um, it, it, it was something that was so just, it was one of those formative moments for me as, a, as just a leader of, of, of children and youth to go, you know what? If I'm going to be a disciple maker of kids and youth, I need to make sure that I am also doing the things that I am asking them to do. And so part of what we included in this curriculum is that the, uh, about the fact that we want you as the leaders to do the Start Here activity as well. And in this one it says draw or write about something that you've made or think about materials that you would need to make that you needed to make your own creation and what did you and or, and then why did you make your creation? And we gave you space here at the bottom um, to begin to, 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 to flesh that out. Uh, because I think kids need to see that, hey, you know what, you're in this too. The, the, this relationship that we're, that we're uh, diving into and creating is, is not just a, a, a one-way street, but it's a partnership, and I need, the kids need to see that we believe it too, that, that we want to do the work along with them. Um, because in the end, they're that much more motivated to want to do it and to want to be a part of it. Um, so again, moving on to the next spread, you will see that this is exactly the same material that you're going to find in the kid's handbook because um, we want you to do the explore section. We want you to do the Bible study. Um, and I can't tell you how many times I heard from leaders from our field test who, you know, it wasn't just doing a Bible study so that they were prepping and being prepared. A lot of the adults actually love doing this Bible study themselves as well. It fed their soul. So it's not just prep work for the sake of just preparing for small group, but it's, it's an opportunity for you to dive in this ex, into this experience with your kids and to just join along with them for the ride. And I think that you're going to see some great benefits uh, from doing this. But th those pages, you don't need to go out and get a separate kid's handbook to walk through. These are included in the small group leader's guide uh, for your benefit to be able to walk through this experience with your kids. All right. Moving right along. Now, you'll see here uh, on this spread, uh, at the top we have small group time. Uh, just again, just to flesh out some thoughts there. Again, here it says, uh, you know, welcome the kids to your small group time. Begin with an opening prayer. We wanted to build in here some suggestions uh, to some structure. And before we move any further, just want to say that a, a lot of you are going to have questions about, well, how do I structure my small group time? Uh, because truth be told, some of you are probably going to have on average around 20, 25 minutes to do small group time. Um, and to be honest, that that that's a really short amount of time. Um, even if you really know your kids, that's a short amount of time. Um, it's it's an opportunity for you to build relationships, absolutely. But you're going to need a game plan going into this. Um, otherwise, you know your kids are going to spend you know 15 minutes talking about whatever, and then you have five minutes to 
ask maybe one or two questions and before you know it, you can't even get to prayer time. So I think part of uh, you as a small group leader coming and approaching small group is making sure that you think through with your leaders, uh, how are we going to wrestle this? How are we going to tackle this? Are we going to put a structure together um, to, to get us through small group nights so that makes so just to make sure that we're hitting all the key components throughout the evening? Um, so again, we built in some helps and to some, uh, some opportunities to transition. Uh, for some of you, you're going to have kids that are going to come prepared. Awesome. Uh, you're going to spend a majority of your time going through the discussion questions because they've already done the work and they're ready to go to have, again, that conversation uh, about what they're learning, about what they experience. For some of you, you have kids that they bring their handbook and they haven't done a thing. Um, in that regard, your small group time may need to look a little bit different. So that way uh, you can spend time uh, giving the kids, uh, the um, working with them through the start here, working with them through the explore. We have a lot of groups in our tests that did that. Saw really great results. I think in the end, you're just going to really need to know your students um, and, and your kids. You're just going to need to be able to, to craft an experience and think through a plan that's going to work best for them uh, based on their makeup. For some of them, they may need more conversation. For others, look, they're just, they're just, they, they just need help to be able to, 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 to progress through the handbook and through um, the, the work that's right there. So you'll see in discussion time, we give some, some again, some structure to it, and then we have varying questions uh, that we've laid out for you to be able to walk through that discussion time. Now, we probably gave, we, we, I know we gave you more questions than you will ever have time for. So if I were you as the leader, I would focus on maybe the one or two questions uh, that, that really stuck out to you or really stuck out to your kids and land there. Uh, by no means do you need to get through every single question. In fact, if you're probably getting through every single question, it's, 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 you're, you're probably rushing the conversation too much. I would slow down, pick one or two questions there, and use that as the bulk of your discussion time. Um, again, we included uh, this very similar in terms of the icon, the memory icon, uh, that you'll find in the kid's handbook. And we, what we do is we spend a little bit of time here as a group uh, practicing uh, memory verses together. And this has been just a great time for kids uh, to do uh, memory work together as a group to help them with verses um, if they need help saying their verses. Um, again, I've seen this individually or in pairs or in a group setting, different activities. And this is, this is the part two of the, the, the handbook that isn't represented in the sample, that what you have right here. But we actually included some memory activities in that part two that then you can um, pick and choose from. So when you see that memory activity and then the page number, in part two of the uh, small group leader guide, we have those memory activities in there, and this is just a space for you to make a notation of, you know, if there's one that you wanted to practice as a particular group on that night. Then you'll see that we have the memory verse for that evening, and then we also wanted to give you the list of the definitions as well. So really, you're seeing content-wise, this is a dupe, this is almost you're finding similar, exactly duplicated content from what's in the kids' handbook. Uh, what you're not really seeing are the story elements that we built in. Uh, just through the, 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 the various comic strips and things like that because we want to make sure we gave you the space for the tools that you need. And then you'll see on the right-hand side here we have prayer time. Um, just as a leader, we want to give you space for every single week coming and, and jotting down those prayer requests for your kids um, as, as the night unfolds. Now, we call it the small group leader guide and fast track guide, the small group leader and fast track guide. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you use the fast track element um, in terms of the program of your club, part of what we wanted to include uh, is, again, here, just showing you uh, the an th this is the answer key. Um, so for section 1.1 from the Kids Handbook, pages 10 through 11, God is Creator, those questions from the Explore section, we wanted to include those answers for you um, just so as you have your fast track guide open and a, and a kid's bringing their handbook, you can go through and check to, to, uh, for, 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 for completion and accuracy. And then you'll also see that we also include as part of that, because we have uh, questions for the silver sections uh, in, in terms of the extra credit, that we wanted to include those answers as well. So that's, so that's the part of the guide. If, if some of that was either unclear or confusing, this is the, these are the elements that are going to appear in the small group leader guide um, for uh, this particular resource. So that's a little high level on uh, just this uh, particular resource. And... Um, I'm going to turn it over right now, and if we have any questions, um, we can go ahead and talk about those. So, um, Missy, do you have any questions? 
Yes. Well, actually, um, at first I need to apologize to the people that are out there viewing tonight. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I realize that technology has failed us. My team has um, sent me an update as Chris was speaking that it might be hard for you to use the chat feature this evening. For some reason, it's disabled. So again, I wanted to encourage you guys to go ahead and tweet at us at awana.org or uh, and use the hashtag awanattupdate. Um, if Twitter is something that's unknown to you or um, you're uncomfortable using it, um, go ahead and email us. Um, awana, uh, TT update at awana.org. I'll be checking that, that email account and making sure that we get any answer or any questions that um, may need to be answered tonight. And please um, type those out as soon as possible. Um, you are also also feel free to use that Google Hangout invite page and comment directly on that page. I've got a team monitoring that as well. So again, I apologize for the technical difficulties for some of you that are itching to ask a question and that there's no, there's no entry point. Um, hopefully those three open doors um, help you actually get, get your message out to us. And again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, fortunately, Chris, we've gotten a lot of emails coming through um, ever since we started do the, doing these emails um, with specific questions about the different pieces of not only the night structure with the new TNT, but each one of those um, those new products and materials as well. And one of the one of the thematic questions um, from some of our friends out there and fellow commanders of those watching are um, volunteers. Say say there's there's limited number of people that you can actually get to recruit to do this. Um, the new small group structure sounds a little scary to some of these these commanders that are already having trouble getting new volunteers and retaining those volunteers. Do you have any kind of advice that you could lend to our audience out there um, as far as how they can manage that if they're afraid that, that the new small group structure um, might not work for the number of people that they've got stepping forward to serve in club? Yeah, yeah, sure, Missy. That's a, and, and again, that's a great question. Um, just because uh, we know that a lot of the, that a lot of churches and a lot of ministries are just uh, coming in, approaching, um, just just bringing their the uniqueness of their context into the really this decision that that they have to make. The beauty about what we've created in terms of the kids' handbook is that it it's still large, it still largely has everything that you loved about the old handbook. There are still sections to be completed. There are verses to memorize. There's absolutely no reason if you didn't want to adopt this uh, new structure that you couldn't use the new handbook with your old with with, with the old structure of, um, of of how you do club. And I, and I know that that has a lot of very very a lot of variables, but uh, and that a lot of those come from your uh, unique ministry context and how you've how you've set up. But uh, the 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 meat, the bread and butter of it is still there. So you could do so. That is a possibility of, of what you could do, um, and then just to speak a little bit to that as well. That you know, I, I just want to share out some encouragement out there because you know I, I I've seen and spent time with leaders of of you know micro churches that are super duper small, um, and then also spent time with leaders of, of on the on the complete opposite end of the spectrum mega church. Um, and let me just share this: that the consistent thread throughout all of that is that both. Both dynamics and everybody in between has issues with with getting, recruiting, and maintaining leaders. Everybody struggles with it. Every, I mean, it, it, the stories are the same. It doesn't matter what size church you are, how much funding that you have. It, at the end of the day, it's still a challenge to get um, pe uh, people to to sign up to be a part of this ministry. And I just want to encourage you: don't stop, don't give up. Uh, you know, recruiting is, a, is an incredible challenge as a, as a ministry leader. In a lot of ways, it's something that gives us the most angst as we approach uh, the start of a, of, a, of a club year to make sure that we have all the spots filled. Um, but, you know, I, just to go a little pastoral um, on us tonight, I was just reminded of the, of, of the feeding of the 5,000 on the way into the office today and just reminded of the loaves and, uh, of, and fishes moment. I mean, you know, the, the, the beauty of that story is that, you know, when the, when the lunch is brought to Jesus, Jesus doesn't go, really, guys, this is it? This is, this is what you brought? You know, you, you know, you disciples, you're just so disappointing. I mean, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say that. He, he takes this little boy's lunch and does something miraculous through it and, and feeds all these people. 
And I just want to encourage you that, you know what, you may be sitting there right now going, you know, I don't, I don't, I just don't have the leaders. Or, you know, just trying to figure out how to make this work. In the end, you know, all we can really do is be faith, is, is to just faithfully steward the things that God has placed in front of us. You know, that the, the really to do ministry well, you know, we can do the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, and, and if I onlys forever, but in the end, you, you just got to steward it best with what God has given you. And for whatever reason, he's, he's appointed this portion of volunteers and leaders to your ministry for this time. And it's up to us to just use, use uh, those resources and, and, and to deploy those people to reach more kids for the cause of Christ. So I just want to encourage you. This is an issue that everybody struggles with. Um, but I just, you know, do not get discouraged in this. This is hard. Um, it, it's just something that everybody struggles with. Oh man, that is that's such an awesome reminder, Chris. Thanks for leading us there. You know, it's 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 true. You know, I guess our role is just to show up, and the Lord will multiply. And that's such a such a wonderful reminder of of that truth. Um, I've got emails coming in, so thank you guys so much for finding a workaround with us. Um, I appreciate that. Continue to send them on in. What I'm going to do is provide that email address right here in the bottom corner while I'm speaking, so it's there and available. TT update at awana.org. Go ahead and send them in. But um, one of the questions I've received is um, how much time should leaders set aside to, to complete the small group content each week? Is it something that will take an hour's worth of time? Is this adding like a, a lot of additional time on top of their preparation that they already do for club in order to complete the content that the kids are doing? What, do, what can you recommend and how, how quickly or not quickly can this be done? Yeah, in terms of overall prep work, uh, you, you know, you're you're looking at, in my opinion, fifty. You know, I, I would say twenty to twenty-five minutes of prep a week to prepare. And part of what, and and I would say that's even on the 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 the, the extreme end of the uh, on the spectrum because we gave you the start here activity. That activity alone probably isn't going to take you very long. Um, and then on top of that, the explore this section, it's just three passages of scripture with some questions. And now, I, I will say this. We did give you the answers in the back of the book. Don't cheat and go to the back of the book and then just fill in the answers. You guys need to make sure that you're doing the work yourself. Like, don't just go back into the, to, to where, again, that, that into the fast track guide and then just copy the answers over. That's not good prep work. That's not going to help you um, in terms of leading your kids um, either through the explore section or just helping to give a, a broader context to have a better discussion. But make sure that you're doing that work um, as well yourself. So again, three scripture passages to look up, some questions to answer. That may take you, you know, some some 10, 15 minutes, and then maybe another five minutes uh, to review. Uh, the discussion questions, like I said, do not know every single one of them by heart, but to focus on maybe those one or two questions that you want to spend time with in your discussion. I, I, so I, I think comfortably a, a leader, you know, spending, you know, that that, and you know, I don't know if you build this into your prep. I would too. I pray for your kids throughout the week. Um, you don't just pray for your kids at club night, but spend some time wrapping up your prep, spending five minutes, taking every single one of your kids by name to the Lord and praying for them no matter what they're going through that week or where they're at. Um, so again, 20, 25 minutes, you're solid. I think that's, that's plenty of time to be able to prep um, and to feel good about leading a small group time. That's that's awesome, and I think that that makes it feel much less um, intimidating for a lot of leaders out there that are that are kind of wondering how are they going to fit this into their already busy schedules. So thank you so much for that. Um, I've got a question that came in through our emails from Joseph Burt, and he's asked if handbook time is to be transferred to small group time. Is the idea that if many kids have not worked alone? Um, that this time is to disciple them or revert back to the handbook model that we've already been following. So I think what he's asking is um, what do you do with those kids that haven't haven't been able to work ahead and then you've got an, a small group that's also divided by those kids that have already done their prep work. How do you manage that? Yeah, I, I think uh, in that environment, like I said, if you have like a split type of a group um, where you have some, if I understand the question, if you have some kids who are uh, coming uh, and, and they are your, you know, maybe have like one or two kids that are prepared, and then you have like three or four that aren't. You know, how do you how do you get everybody on the same page? 
I think a couple factors here are one, what type of small group dynamic do you, do you want to leverage uh, during your small group time? Um, you know, for, because for some of you, what might work really well is to go through the kids' handbook together as a group to do essentially a small group Bible study um, to, again, work through the start here. And if you have those kids that are already done and, and, and they're completed and they know it, again, this is going back to knowing your kids, um, have, have them you know, lead the discussion in the explore section. They did the work. I mean, don't just let them sit there and, and twiddle their thumbs with nothing to do. I mean, they could, they, you could do some peer-to-peer -peer work. Um, if, you know, if they feel confident working with somebody. See, that's the benefit and the beauty to having, you know, some of these kids that come and they, and they are prepared. Leverage that preparedness. Just don't let them sit. Plug them in and get them involved. Have them, you know, lead a buddy through uh, what the, you know, uh, uh, through the explore section what they did. So, I think that that's one way that you could approach it. On the other hand, um, you know, you could have you could have some time split up. You could split your time, do do a little bit of getting everybody on the same page with the explore section, and then spending some time actually talking about it in a group. Or or maybe you just pick one question um, instead of maybe one or two questions, just to kind of you know um, get everybody on the same page and have a good discussion with it as you're wrapping up your Bible study. Um, yeah, that, that is going to be a reality where you're going to have a lot of kids coming just from a lot of different perspectives, how, how, you, how you leverage and maximize your group. I think in the end it needs to meet the needs of the kids in your group. So if you have you know, a, a, a good majority of kids that aren't coming prepared, you may need to do more of a small group Bible study than necessarily a small group discussion. So it's not so much a revert back to a previous format as it is um, what, what am I going to, out of, out of everything that's in front of me, what am I going to leverage in terms of priority to help maximize that time for all, for all my kids to help serve them to, to somewhat to the best degree uh, possible during that time? I hope that, I hope that answers your question, gives you some ideas of, of, of what you could do during that time. Yeah, and, and, and Joseph, if you're out there and you're still watching, uh, by all means, if we didn't respond to that question as you were, as you were hoping to, go ahead and email us again and we'd love to engage with you over email and, and get down to the root of, of what you're asking there. Um, I've got a couple more questions for us. Um, there's a little bit more time left. If there are some additional questions that are still out there, by all means, please email us or tweet at us. Um, we've still got a little bit of time to respond. Um, Chris, this is, this is more of a, from your own personal experience, um, from your role is as a pastor in the church working with kids and, and in the small group format before sometimes it's hard just to get the one kid to engage how do how do you get to know that kid that that either may be um, a little bit more introverted or um, uh, may not be interested in participating how do you get that one kid that's kind of the satellite off of your group to to become engaged do you have suggestions for that that kind of child yeah, that's a that's a really great question um, because you know my first my first thought is okay why are they not engaging if they're an introverted kid a lot of time because I'm an extroverted introvert um, I fluctuate on both ends of the spectrum because you know essentially I want to be invited to the party but I don't want to go um, it, you know in the end for I, I think as it relates to kids part of their struggle with small group largely is that in the in the dynamics that we've created in local church ministry kids are coming with no frame of reference into this group. So if you have a church ministry that deploys a small group strategy on Sunday morning, I mean, your kids are coming in blind. I mean, uh, they, they, I'm sure the majority of them don't know the topic or, you know, haven't actually spent time doing the work. What I love about our update in our, in our program is that if, if for those introverted kids, I just gave you, you, you know exactly what we're going to talk about um, from a thematic standpoint before you even walk through the door of club. You've actually had time to sit with it. I mean, that's the beauty of drawing in the, some of the, our introverted kids to get them to um, engage in a small group environment is just giving them the heads up of, hey, this is what we're going to talk about. Um, and, and to give them a little bit of time on the front end to wrestle through and prepare through that, I think you're going to see some benefits from and to see some of those introverted kids starting to open up um, as you progress through simply because you've given them the necessary context in order to have a conversation because they've spent a long enough time thinking through it on their own that they actually have something to come and say. Um, for some of your even more squirrely kids, I'm a, I am a fan of giving jobs and 
and and helping kids and helping and, and essentially in, inviting the kids in my group to help me fulfill my job as a club leader. So you have some kids that are just highly organized. Give them the clipboard and let them take attendance. Uh, give them jobs to do. For those of you kids, for those of your kids who just constantly want to talk, and you know you're having a hard time uh, keeping them, in, you know, maybe engaged in what they're doing, have them actually lead prayer time, um, and 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 put them in charge of making sure all the requests get jotted down. Um, don't be afraid to give your kids some 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 roles and some responsibilities to help them see, um, because oftentimes the kids that are squirrely or are distracted or just aren't engaged. Um, they, they just they need a role. They, they need somebody to come and say, you, I, you have great talent and great potential here. I'm going to give you this job and assign this job to you uh, just to be able to help them find uh, just meaning, help them f just feel secure that they have something to contribute to the group. Bravo. That's awesome. Um, one last final question, and I, um, we're getting close to time here. And I know part of this was addressed um, last week as we talked through the student handbook, um, but something that's kind of thematic and a question that we received through the emails um, this evening is, what do you do for the, the kid that blazes through their handbook in two months' time, and um, how do you keep them from twiddling their thumbs for the rest of the year in small group time? Like, what do you do for that kid? Yeah, for them, again, this is going off of a similar thread to what I just said and mentioned, is that if you have a kid that's totally blown through the handbook, remember, thematically, thematically we're going week by week. And the truth is, is that if you've had a kid blow through the, through the handbook, by no means have they necessarily mastered every con conversational element of the program. So while they may have a, a lot that they have built up in terms of the work and in terms of the completion, but if anything, that, that, that to me shows, okay, this kid is now ready to have even more of a conversation um, about it. I, I remember actually a hilarious story where um, I had a kid uh, when I was a children's youth pastor who, um, again, this was a new church I was coming into, and I just had this kid. He, he, he was in Christian school. He was in um, you know, midweek clubs. He, this kid was so plugged into the local church, it wasn't even funny. And I just remember him looking at me, going like toe-to-toe, -to -toe, straight up, looking me in the eye and going, you have nothing to teach me. I know it all. <laughs> and, you know, just like, one, I, just, I, I was just, just blown away by his audacity. Um, but second, just love that that sort of that 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 challenge, and I think that we do have some kids that are coming um, on on our to our club nights that have sort of a similar uh, mentality. Um, and and in that, my my response to him was, you know, essentially, well, we'll see, um, because I I don't believe that you know everything. I don't believe that you know you you have studied beyond. Uh, the, 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 the point, like that you have somehow arrived and that you know it all frontwards and backwards. Um, and if anything, that's the beauty of the small group dynamic is because we're going to have conversations and show our kids things that they may not notice, that they may not see to provide a different perspective. And for that kid that's coming and has so much knowledge built up in them, you know what? I, I do think that some of our kids grow up in a system where their knowledge is never tested. Um, I, I am a fan of, you know, or at least I define um, mastery of a subject as the ability to teach it back. Um, and for some of our kids to say, you know, you've really mastered something when, you've, when you can start teaching it back to another person. So essentially, small group becomes the time of, okay, well, bring it. If you know it, if you've memorized the verses and done the work and done the study, bring it. Bring it during that time. Engage in a good discussion. Ask your kids whether or not they agree with you or each other. I think a lot of times we just sort of, in our small group environments, we, we do this sort of, you know, kind of like, oh, well, that's good, or, or not, and, and, and silent approval of things rather than creating an environment where kids can receive good, good and negative feedback about what they believe uh, to be challenged to be stretched. I, I think that's how you grow. That's how you grow and, and start the growth process for lifelong disciples. So uh, again, if you have that kid that's coming, he's, he did it all in two months, you know, by no means is he going to sit in small group or would I ever let, allow him to sit in small group and just waste away his time. You, you, you memorize the entire handbook, that's awesome. 
contribute back to the group, help challenge, help bring a great discussion. And don't just sit there. But again, and, and just take, take, take. But think about how you can give and how you can challenge that kid to give back to the rest of the group by having a great discussion. Um, because they're, they're, they're not just sitting there, but they're a great asset um, to use uh, in, in the ministry to help um, one another. Because in, in the beauty, we all need each other. Um, and, and those kids are going to show you things that you need to see, and you're going to have the opportunity to show kids things that they need to see as they grow to become more like Christ. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Chris. We are getting close to time, and I know there are a couple more emails that I'm getting coming through, um, and a few questions that, if you don't mind, I w I'd like to take the wheel here and just address um, questions about about training and when do I know about um, large group guides and awards. I wanted to mention right off the bat that there's there's going to be training that's going to be available in the upcoming weeks. If you go to awana.org forward slash TT update, you will find on the right hand column there invites that link you directly to the next upcoming um, hangouts that we're going to have, those webinars. And the first one is going to be April 7th. We'll be covering large group materials. And then on April 14th, we'll be talking through record keeping and awards. So for those of you out there asking about that, those are our next two upcoming events. So go ahead and get those on your calendars. Um, I also wanted to mention um, our program team is working hard right now to provide you more resources to train your volunteers on how to run small group, um, what does it look like to implement some of these new structures in club night. And um, those will be made available this spring. Um, we will also have AMCs that are offered to you as well in your area, so contact your regional director. Um, those will be happening in the fall and there will be some one-on-one -on -one training if you feel like what's being provided on the digital platform upcoming this spring and this summer isn't enough. Get that one-on-one -on -one training. Contact your local missionary. They should be able to help you out with AMC information as well. And now. Um, being that we're close to time, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and close us out unless you have something else that you'd like to say in order to say good night to all these awesome people that have showed up to view. Yeah, just uh, again, thank you for what you do. I mean, we, we, we close it out with this by meaning in all sincerity that you guys are, you, you guys are doing incredible work. Um, just you have no idea the impact, the, how powerful it is to have a young disciple that's known in your ministry. Um, that, that's not just a name on a chart, but it's a relationship that is a person who's known, um, who's seen, and who's understood. It's just a powerful thing in, in the ministry. And I just want to encourage you that as you continue to wrestle with the dynamics of small group, that you just keep that at the forefront of your mind, that um, it's about creating an environment where the, the, the seed of their faith can grow. Um, where, where they can wrestle with the hard things and make that personal connection with the leader that when they have hard questions, they know the first person that comes to mind is, is, is in that list of people is going to be um, largely and to some degree some of you and your leaders. So don't give up. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, you, and again, we just uh, we pray for you. Um, as, you, as, you, as you close out a, a, a club year and then start to get ready for the next, thank you for what you do. Can't say enough and just grateful um, for just what you, what, what you bring to the kingdom of God and for the cause of Christ. So I just, again, say thank you. And I love you guys and love what you're doing. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, again, I, I just want to echo the thanks um, that we have for, for the amount of work that you leaders do out there. And again, we want to engage with you. So if there's something that, um, that came up tonight in your mind that wasn't addressed, please email us. Um, we'd love to chat. Thanks so much for coming, and I think that's a good night for now. Good night.